Hello and welcome. Half of India has already voted and after the voting today in phase 5, we would be crossing the 400 mark in the 543 member Lok Sabha. Uh, we are going to dissect today what exactly is at stake in phase 5 in these 51 seats which the BJP won 39 off in 2014 and with me here to, to break this down is Sanjeev Singh of the Times of India and Kumar Shakti Shekhar. Sanjeev, you first. UP has a huge chunk, 14 seats going to poll today. Yeah, in fact, if you see out of the 51 seats that are going to polls, Congress only has two and those are from Amiti and Rai uh, Even in the last election, we had seen Smriti Irani. She had reduced uh, Rahul Gandhi's margin, which was, would normally be in the range of 2-3 lakhs down to 1 lakh something thousand votes. So it is a pretty close election and a battle of prestige. There's also the big uh, Priyanka factor and the question is to both of you. Uh, Priyanka, of course, first uh, there was a tease, if you like, by the Congress about the, the possibility of a contest in, in Varanasi, but that was not to be. They backed off from that. So how, to what extent is Priyanka galvanizing the Carter? Wherever she goes for campaigning, there's a huge crowd of the Congress workers and supporters. But will it translate into votes? That is That remains to be seen. These seats, of course, in UP are the ones ranging from uh, uh, Dhorara in the north and Baraj right down to Banda. Uh, and the victory uh, vote share margins in these seats were not very high for the BJP. The BJP won the bulk of these, but barring, say, uh, Faizabad or, uh, or Barabanki, the victory margin in 2014 weren't that high. And now with the SP, BSP, Gadbandan, these are very close contests to watch, Sanjeev. Yeah, in fact, if you just uh, add up the vote share of uh, SP and BSP here, so you will see that it's again pretty close uh, for, for, for the BJP because 18 plus 18, 36, almost uh, 37 is to 40. So it, it's pretty close if you look at 2014 numbers. Also, you know, Dhorara is the seat from where Jitin Prasad is contesting. Remember, we had that huge thing about him uh, almost walking out of the party. And we also have Lucknow from where Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh is contesting. Then we have Faisalabad, Ayodhya basically. Uh, Both Lucknow and, and Faisalabad are BJP Fazabad, bastions. Yeah. Uh, let's shift focus now to uh, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. First up is these seven seats in Madhya Pradesh. But of course, Madhya Pradesh, like Rajasthan, is where the Congress pipped the BJP in December 2018. How much of an impact do you think uh, that victory is going to have in the, in the seats that are going to polls now? Or is it a totally different election? What went against the BJP in the 2018 assembly election may also actually end up going against the Congress in this Lok Sabha election because... There was heavy anti-incumbency in uh, Madhya Pradesh and a lot of people were upset with Shivraj Singh Chauhan. But uh, this time the vote is for Modi and plus the government has changed. So if there's anything to blame for local issues, then the blame will go to the Congress. So that is the map of December 2018 and look how much blue there is. The issue is whether you are with or against Modi uh, in this election uh, and local issues. The question is how much will local issues dwarf that or not? Shakti, your, your views on this? Yeah, it is basically BJP's bastions, the seven seats which are going to polls yeah. in the fifth phase. So BJP has been winning these seven seats. So I think it won't be very difficult for the BJP to maintain or retain these seats. Now, those are the 12 seats in Rajasthan going to polls today that uh, this again is, it's a different ball game this time in 2019 in Rajasthan, Sanjeev. Yes, in fact, uh, you know, again, the onus is on BJP. They had a full score in 2014. And, uh, you know, the BJP appears quite confident because of the fact that a lot of sitting MPs have been re repeated. You also have two ministers, including uh, Rajavardhan Singh Rathor from Jaipur Rural who's contesting. So again, you know, uh, the issue is that even in Rajasthan, what you will see is that uh, the whole battle is local issues versus the persona of Narendra Modi. I'll add to what Sanjeev said that during the assembly elections, the Rajasthan voters had given a slogan, Vasundra teri khair nahi, Modi se hume bear nahi. It means they didn't have any enmity against Narendra Modi, but they were against Vasundra Raje. Therefore, it seems the issues are not local, they are national. But I also have a counter to that in the sense that despite so much opposition to Vasundra, she still managed to win 70 odd seats out of the 200 seats. So it wasn't a one way street in Rajasthan as well. In both these cases, both are also tests of the Modi model in that sense. Because here you've got local satraps of the BJP 
who got trounced, albeit in very, very close contests in 2018. And if the BJP ends up getting the bulk of the seats here, it will show that it's Modi who's getting the votes. Let's now shift focus to Bihar. Uh, Shakti, this is an area that you have tracked quite closely. You know this area well. Bihar, of course, is one of the few states where there is a strong Gatbandhan alliance against the NDA. RJD is part of the alliance here, but not in Jharkhand. So what is the outlook like for the Gatbandhan versus the NDA? Because remember, Bihar is also a, a, a state where the BJP one has actually sacrifice some of his MPs to accommodate the JDU in its alliance here. Yeah, uh, and these uh, five seats which are going to pose in the fifth phase, so they are Sitamadhi, Madhubani, Muzaffarpur, Saran and Hajipur. And BJP or in fact the NDA, they had MPs in all these five seats. Now there are two seats important among these five. One is Madhubani. Hmm. Madhubani where Shakil Ahmad of the Congress, he has rebelled against his party and is contesting as an independent candidate. Mm. That is important. He was a union minister and two-term MP from there. Mm. So that is quite important. And there was a seat won by Hukum Dio Narayan Yadav, Yadav yeah. with just a marginal victory margin of 2.5%, 2.4% in 2014. Yeah, so I, I, I just wanted to add to what Shakti was saying. Uh, the fact that Shakil Ahmed is contesting as an independent actually is a very clear indicator of the problem in the alliance of the UPA. We have seen a lot of tickets being distributed or uh, heard reports of people being unhappy over ticket distribution and how some parties were given more tickets than they should have actually got. And that is why one feels that, you know, here, Tejashwi Yadav may have missed a trick. Mm. And then we also have Muzaffarpur. That is also an important constituency where the Gadbandan has posed a tough challenge to the BJP candidate. Muzaffarpur, uh, you know, as Shakti was saying, Nalin, it's important because... Uh, here, the, there is a party called the VIP party, which mm -hmm. is contesting. And that party's uh, vote bank is primarily the mallas or the mm -hmm. boatmen. So here you have a sitting MP who is a Nishad, Ajay Nishad of the BJP. His dad was also a two or three time MP from this place. So this is going to be an indicator of whether, you know, the Malla vote is actually going to shift towards the UP alliance or will the BJP be able to retain it. So it's a big test for not just BJP, but also for Nitish Kumar, whether he enjoys that sort of influence amongst these communities. Good point, Sanjeev. Let's move focus now to the national picture. So that is the national map of the seats going to polls today. Sanjeev, your final word, Shakti, your final word on what's at stake today. Well, overall, again, it's a, it's a big challenge for the BJP to retain their seats. But I think if we look at the eastern side, that's where uh, BJP is pinning its hopes to be able to uh, recover any lost ground. Although the BJP has a tough challenge to retain these 39 seats, but even the TMC in West Bengal and Rahul Gandhi in Amethi, they also have a tough challenge to retain their seats. Rahul Gandhi in Amethi because Smriti Rani, the Union Minister for Textiles, has been able to pose a tough challenge to him. Last time, she had brought down Rahul Gandhi's victory margin to just 1,7,000 votes. So all these three parties, the BJP, Congress and the TMC, they have a huge challenge before them. We'll wait and see on that. But ultimately, uh, at this point in the election, a lot of voters have already made up their minds. Both BJP and Congress in the last couple of weeks, based on what their ground feedback is telling them on uh, on how the vote, how they think the votes have turned out. So therefore, at this stage, we really are in the end game. Phases 5 and then 6 and 7 and then the results for 23rd May. Keep watching the Times of India. We'll keep bringing you live updates as they unfold on timesofindia.com.